Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black tap-out control deck featuring two copies of the Silent Spider, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And this card's pretty well positioned at the moment, especially when it comes to the black mid-range matchups, where Invoke Despair is one of the most important cards, not only to deal with opposing permanents, but also to draw cards and deal damage in the process. So now if the opponent has a copy of Invoke Despair lingering in their graveyard, we can exile it with a Silent Spider, and and then also take a look at their hand and library to exile any additional copies, and then we can even play one of those for as long as we control our Silent Spider, so it can be a nice value card as well, but more importantly gets rid of all the opponent's copies of Invoke Despair, and these mid-range matchups are often determined by the player that gets to cast the most copies of Invoke Despair, so this is a great way to get a leg up in the matchup. And another great tool is Jingataxius, which can copy the first artifact, instant or sorcery spell we play each turn, while countering the first artifact, instant or sorcery the opponent plays each turn, so it can also potentially help us deal with opposing copies of Invoke Despair while doubling our own, which is so bank-breaking that it often wins the game on the spot. So these two legendary creatures are the main reason to splash blue in this deck, and then we also have two copies of Silver Scrutiny, which can draw a ton of cards in the late game, also synergizes nicely with Shieldred, which will gain two life whenever we draw a card, while draining the opponent for two if they do the same. And then we also have a few targeted discard effects, two copies of Duress to take away a non-creature non-land card, and two copies of Pilfer can take away any non-land card from the opponent's hand. So that's a great way to potentially take opposing copies of Invoke Despair before the opponent can cast them, so we can then exile them with our Silent Spider. Also nice to double with Jingitaxius in the late game and these mid-range matchups, where the opponent often still has a ton of cards in hand. And uh, we can also potentially take away answers for Jingitaxius that we won't be able to counter with the ability, like opposing copies of the Meat Hook Massacre, which is our sweeper of choice here, can also gain a bit of life in the process, and counts as an enchantment that we can maybe sacrifice to an opposing Invoke Despair, so it's not quite as effective. And the enchantment combined with our artifacts can also potentially enable our soul transfer, which can either exile a creature or planeswalker, or return a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to our hand. And if we control both an enchantment and an artifact, we can choose both potentially. And getting back our powerful legendary creatures is a pretty common strategy in these grindy matchups. And then we've got some additional spot removal with Cutdown at 1 mana and Infernal Grasp at 2 mana. And then a Reckoner Bankbuster can also draw a few extra cards and eventually make a pilot token that helps us crew the Bankbuster itself so we can deal additional damage. And then we also have the Celestis to help us ramp out our various 5 drops on turn 4 potentially. Very nice to play a turn 4 Invoke Despair for instance. And then we've got 26 lands total, since we don't really want to miss too many land drops in our deck. Our deck is pretty mana hungry once you consider the various X spells that we typically don't really want to cast in the early game. And then we also have a lot of life gain built into our mana base with Dismal Backwater and four copies of Obscura Storefront, which can fetch up two islands and ten swamps. Only two islands, because we do need Quadruple Black for Invoke Despair, so it would be pretty awkward if we have too many islands out there and then also one of each of the channel lands, which can give us a bit of extra interaction, and Abandoned Mire gives us more graveyard recursion to get back our powerful creatures. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Some early interaction, discard, and then Celestus to set up a turn 4 Invoke Despair. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one island. Now yeah, let's have a look. Opponent on the Jin counterspell deck. Okay, so the two counterspells are annoying when we're trying to set up Invoke Despair. Not too worried about Tolarian Terror or Fading Hope. So do we just grab the heart counter? Since we can try and play around to make disappear. Could also take the card draw effect to kind of strand them with their current hand. Um, close one. The upside of taking Make Disappear is that I can resolve Celestus. 
and then they can maybe counter one invoke, but hopefully the second one resolves. They maybe drew another counter here. Yep, syncopate for one. That's too bad. So they wouldn't be able to invoke despair now. So now they can uh, thirst for discovery. I doubt our opponent's gonna tap out for Tolarian Terror anytime soon. But of course, that's what we're hoping for to set up our invoke despair. So this game's not going to be over anytime soon. We want to find some of our card draw engines. Bangbuster would be good. And of course Jingataxius, if it ever resolves. It's going to be very hard for them to beat, but resolving a 7-drop is pretty tricky in this matchup. Ooh, Duress is nice. I think we want to wait on Duress until we can actually double spell with Invoke Despair. So we can maybe clear a path. Another very important tool in the matchup. There's Hot Jin. We can Infernal Grasp end of turn. To maybe make them Fading Hope. Or they might have another Protection spell here. Yep, it's going to be Fading Hope. So we also don't lose the two life. And uh, yeah, we get to Duress and Invoke Despair. Opponent holding double Urtice Corn and Syncopates. Oh, grab his Corn. And we'll just draw three here. Finding another Invoke and Jin. So if we can resolve Jin, double Invoke Despair is very hard to beat. And I'm hoping our opponent ends up uh, tapping out, but... Could see a cheap terror with uh, Counterspell Backup. Okay, now we can go for an Instant Speed Scrutiny in the opponent's turn. And then if they counter, we can maybe untap, play Jin. Thing that's... How we're gonna play this. The other method is just brute forcing it and just trading for their counter spells, hoping something will stick. If they want to syncopate, they'll also have to tap quite a bit of mana. So then they might not have Scorn available. Ooh, Negate is what they drew. So they still have Scorn available, but there's Duress. I think Duress into Invoke Despair is the play here. There's no real reason for them to counter since we already know their hand. Right, they're gonna Scorn anyways. If we actually had a land, we would have been able to resolve Jin, But this is also pretty sweet. Okay. So now that we're starting to build up a mana advantage, it's also gonna make their syncopate worse. So if I Jin, after playing a land, it should resolve, as far as we know, because they can still syncopate for two thanks to the mana discount. And then once Jin is in play, it's gonna be very hard for them to recover. With a double invoke despair, especially. Alright, Jin resolves. So the first counter spell they play is not gonna work now. Now we are at 18, so this Jin does kill us pretty quickly. But I imagine invoke despair is gonna be good enough here. So 
will transfer as a backup. Probably fine to play Abandon Mire just in case. And this is why we built this deck, to copy Invoke Despair with Jin. And pulling it off against Mono Blue is uh, pretty tricky, but finding those duresses early helped. So our opponent could fire off a Syncopate for zero just to satisfy Jin, and then still maybe counter one of the Invoke Despairs. Well, this seems kind of fruitless. So two more Invoke Despairs on the stack. And a March to save the Djinn. Fair enough. Well, that could actually save them if it weren't for Invoke Despair just killing our opponents straight up. Because yeah, the Djinn actually might have been able to swing for 10 next turn. Good thing our opponent was low enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and hand seems... Like, it's lacking interaction, but at least we're on the play, and we've got a lot of card draw, so we can hopefully find the interaction we need. We'll start by fetching an island. Turn 2, Bankbuster. Turn 3, maybe Celestus. Opponent Esper colors, so... Could be a pretty grindy matchup. Make that four colors. Okay. I guess even five. All ramping into an early Jenga Taxis could be a fine strategy. Next turn we get to draw. Maybe play another Bank Buster as our opponent slowly develops their mana. And what do I discard? Maybe another Bank Buster. Maybe Bank Buster is better than Scrutiny. It's a close call. I do want to keep my land drops here. So we can play another one and draw and then still play a tap land. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this slow pace. Next turn we can play Jingataxius. For now we can just draw twice. Still keep up. Cut down. Now they might have an enchantment to remove Jin, So maybe I should wait to play until we can get immediate value. And for now keep drawing with our bank busters, which will eventually make pilot tokens as well. Next turn is where opponent could play the Kami War as well. But it's going to be another tap land for now. Yeah, if we can find something like a Duress, play Jin and then double Duress, that would be pretty effective. Assuming this resolves. That's part of why I like Bankbuster as opposed to Scrutiny, is that it eventually applies a bit of pressure too. Well, we definitely hit our next couple land drops. Silent Spider does not have any targets yet. So, yeah, I guess we can crew an attack and then see what our opponent has to offer here. Maybe a Wandering Emperor to Exile Bankbuster and then we can play Jin. Opponent takes it. Yeah, I guess we'll go for it here. 
If they counter it, I can maybe still get it back with Abandoned Mire. Is it time for the Kami War now? Can still draw with Bankbuster. It's gonna be a Massacre for five instead. Okay. So now we can make a token. Soul Transfer could get back Jin as well. So let's see, three mana, Soul Transfer, four, five, six, seven, and then we can still play Jin afterwards. Yeah, I guess that's the plan here. And then we can attack with both Bangbusters. The only drawback of tapping Jin is a Wandering Emperor exiling our tapped creature here. And then we can loot away a land as well. And Shieldred's great. Alright. Archangel with double kicker. Opponent back up to 15 and uh, Leyline Binding exiles Jin as we suspected. So we still don't have any targets for Silent Spider here. Although we could kill the Archangel to uh, put it in the graveyard and then try and exile it. So if we Massacre for 4, still can't quite play Silent Spider, but I could play Shieldred. Yeah, it seems fine. Those will cancel each other out. And smash for 4. And then, thanks to the Celestis, we could even cast Archangel with Double Kicker. Cruelty is going to have a look, perhaps. Can take a Silent Spider. We'll be able to abandon Mire for two mana once we get both Legendaries down. So possible this is a uh, Zur enchantment deck, and next turn they're gonna search up Zur. Although we can cut it down. So Silent Spider, Exile Archangel, and yep, opponent's holding Zur in hand. Another Archangel on their deck. And there we see Wandering Emperor. Okay, so if I play Archangel um, with Kicker, then we can crew Bangbuster twice and our opponent should be dead since they cannot channel here. And then even Iganjo here is not going to work. Okay, so this ended up being a very slow plotting game, but the Bangbusters put in a ton of work, not only drawing cards, but dealing damage too. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, fine hands, can the rest to maybe take away answers for Shieldred, and then uh, Shieldred's can uh, buy us quite a bit of time. Put in black white, so they could have quite a bit of uh, removal. Could wait one more turn, but we could also take away wedding announcements, for instance. Okay, opponent is not messing around with double invoke despair and destroy evil. 
but they are stuck on two lanes. So maybe we just take the destroy evil, we don't attack with Shieldred so they can't exile with Emperor, and then uh, hope they won't be able to invoke the Sparrows anytime soon. And then we're hoping to find Jingataxia soon so we can counter those Invoke Despairs. Opponents holding a Shadow Prophecy, but they actually don't have any basic land types, so it's not going to draw anything for them yet. So they're a bit unlucky here to have drawn all their dual lands. There's a Wandering Emperor. And hoping for no land here. Bankbuster is fine. Shieldred can punish that as well. Let your do the and then we could meet Hook Massacre for two just to clear the Samurai. And make their um, invoke less effective because that will be happening next turn. And then I guess we just attack and kill Emperor. Now they could just play another Emperor Exile Shieldred, but they're more likely to invoke. Okay. Well, it's time to draw some action. Opponent will invoke despair. Deals with Shieldred. And a Bangbuster is not bad. I'll activate main phase in case we find one of our discard spells. And now it's a war of attrition, but our opponent's definitely ahead with uh, another Invoke Despair in hand. Infernal Grasp not looking too great. But at least we're not missing our land drops, unlike our opponent. So we'll draw first, in case we need 5 mana. And yeah, another Invoke seems good. Just to keep drawing cards here. Puts her opponent to four as well. That's a lot of land. At least one of them we can channel, but uh, yeah, could use like a Celestis to loot him away. Archangel puts her opponent back up to five, although we can grasp it. And a soul transfer as well. Do we have any creatures to get back? Shieldred? We can. Is that the plan here? Shieldred just dies to another Invoke Despair is a problem. So maybe we want to Infernal Grasp and then pass a turn with a plan of making a token end of turn so they can't use Invoke Despair to kill it. And then I guess we'll thin out the deck some more. And I should probably kill the Angel now, before they can crew Bankbuster in their turn to hit me. And that's okay. Could actually Soul Transfer Exile their Bankbuster, as opposed to trying to get Shieldred back. Now Shieldred will drain them for two if they don't have instant speed removal. So we are getting pretty close to just killing them if Bangbuster gets to connect. But if I kill their Bangbuster, then we also make it more likely that our Bangbuster can hit them. Celestis happens. So 
so they might have their own infernal grasp for my bank buster here. So we could potentially use Soaring City to uh, bounce our own bank buster as well. Now we can do rest to have a look. Void Rend to kill my bank buster. Okay, I guess um, Soaring City to bounce it. And then Farewell, Invoke Despair, Double Shadow Prophecy, Double Wandering Emperor. That's quite the hand. Maybe we have to take Farewell and then play Bank Buster and take it from there. Although Wandering Emperors can make it tricky for Bank Buster to ever connect. I think it's still the more unique effect here that could be annoying. And then it's probably fine to attack with the pilots, because if they exile that with Emperor, then they're not exiling the Bank Buster necessarily. Another Archangel. Okay. So that can kill the pilots. And they can double kick it here, thanks to Celestis. That happens. But we'll draw. Vogue Despair is nice, and there's Jin. Okay, I think we found our way out here. Jin, next turn, double up on Invoke Despair, should do it. Don't want to crew Bank Buster and have Jin exiled by Wandering Emperor. So instead, we can just draw. Or we could Soul Transfer, although I'll be locking in Exile a Creature. So I can't get back Shieldred and Exile Archangel here, sadly. So I guess we might as well draw now, in case I find another Duress or a Pilfer, even better. And we'll be taking Double Wandering Emperor. Or I could go for Emperor and Invoke Despair, on the off chance that they can counteract Jin's ability with a cheap effect and then still invoke despair to get rid of it. Sure. And then we'll pass. Opponent can gain three up to nine. And then double invoke despair. Should be quite effective. Well, this has been a weird game. Opponent never firing off Shadow Prophecy. I guess because they don't have any basic types. They only drew their Dual lands, I just realized. So they've been a bit unlucky with their Shadow Prophecies. And our opponent concedes to double Invoke Despair, just like we drew it up. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Probably fetching another Swamp for Invoke Despair, as opposed to an Island for Scrutiny. And then we can cut down, and then Soul Transfer, opponent on a green-white enchantment deck. Yeah, I'm fine with a cut down on Naturalists. before they get the benefit from the discount. Then we just want to hit our land drops. Another five drops, not really what we wanted to see. If I draw an island, I'm probably fine with scrutiny for two. Found a swamp instead. Well, at least our opponent's also not pressuring us. Cut down the draw. So this turned into a weird staring contest. Naturalist, we can kill as soon as we get priority. 
but I do get to potentially cast a 3-drop first. Alright, so Lustus, I'll take. Might get exiled here, given that our opponent's not been doing much. They might have some removal, but nope, we get to untap. And one Silent Spider can go. And then now the question is how to proceed. Didn't think I want to Silent Spider the Naturalist here. So we could just invoke Despair, or we can Scrutiny main phase, although I'll have to discard to hand size a bunch if I draw four. Whereas Invoke Despair, I guess I would still draw three and discard to hand size. So maybe we do actually play Silent Spider. And Exile Naturalist. Opponent's hand is uh, indeed a bunch of removal for creatures. And then we can have a look at uh, their library as well. Some of the usual suspects. Kami would have been a nice one to exile. Okay. We also nerfed the Sigardian Savior. Which would have been pretty effective at getting back Naturalist otherwise. Opponent draws with Plaza. And discards to hand size, so this game's not going very well for our opponent. Can hit our land drop, and uh, yeah, Invoke Despair looks okay. We can still duress as well. So we probably won't have to discard to hand size now. Or we can pilfer. And uh, probably go for Savior. Okay, so we're just missing something like a Shieldred or Jingataxius. What do we discard? Maybe Duress, since I don't really care about anything in their hands. Companion to draw. And a hold for Ransom. So we have to pay 7 mana to unlock our Silent Spider, basically. Not too worried about it. We could play a Bank Buster, draw, see what we get. Can play Naturalist. And pass it back. Visitor, I probably want to cut down. Okay. So opponent can exile their own naturalist. And we'll take two. There's Shieldred, perfect. Now we can draw and gain two. And Invoke Despair also looking very tasty. Do we want to deal with a companion here? I guess we'll pass and then we can always Infernal Grasp if needed. Reign of Truth. That's okay. 6-6 six, six, Companion. Do we see another Reign of Truth? Nope. Sky Blast Samurai. Sure. So if we Grasp and then next turn Despair, we can deal with a Samurai as well. And our opponent's going to be pretty close to dead. Okay. 
There's Jengataxius. We can crew Bankbuster with the Silent Spider and still hit for 8. And that'll be game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. We've got our early interaction. And I'll wait on the rest for the turn at least. Opponents a white enchantment deck potentially. Yeah, we'll do rest now to potentially take wedding announcements. And yep, yeah, there's a wedding announcements and a bunch of planeswalkers, restoration as well. And a sanctuary warden. So a pretty strong hand. Restoration will get their lands going. Scrutiny is not bad. So we can Infernal Grasp the Architect. Put on Discarding Sanctuary Warden, so they're potentially also an Invoke Justice deck that can reanimate the Angel, which is bad news. Medog Massacre, not quite what the Doctor ordered. So yeah, we can Infernal Grasp the Architect, untap, and then Scrutiny for three, potentially at instant speed. And then we're hoping to find a Silent Spider, which can exile the Warden as well. Can potentially cut down the Samurai token. We'll wait and see where they place their counter. And if they're willing to flash in another Wandering Emperor to fizzle cut down, that's fine by me. Okay. So, token's gonna grow up to a 4 4. Could kill that instead of Architect. Or we can just take the hits, but their creatures are going to outgrow Meatook Massacre, and at least Massacre is better against Architect than it is the Samurai. And that's their entire turn gone as well. So this turn, Scrutiny draw three, next turn maybe Massacre to wipe the board, depending on what happens here. Alright, opponent is putting counters on Architect, so now... Massacre's not good enough. Ambitious farmhand to get a lance. Surprised they didn't run out Elspeth. Maybe afraid of a counter spell. But that's not how we roll. Would love to find an Invoke Despair. Opponent is looking at their graveyard, so they might have found Invoke Justice. Which we can now take away. Alright, so start with Duress, and then we can still Pilfer if needed, and play Bankbuster. Right, it's going to be Specialist instead, so we can take Elspeth. Specialist doesn't have anything to get back. So in that case we'll uh, Bankbuster draw, and then next turn maybe Massacre to wipe the board. And I'm hoping they diversify their plus one counters a little bit. Opponent will sack Reliquary. Okay. So next turn we can Massacre for five. Counter on the Spirit Token, excellent. Remember your training. And they're gonna activate the farm hand, which is maybe why they put the counter there. But that works for me. Draw end of turn. And massacre for five. And at least we don't have to worry about an ultimate from the Wandering Emperor. 
Now they can specialize back the farm hands, but that's okay. Ooh, farewell instead, exiling our Bankbuster and Massacre before making a token, but there's an Invoke Despair. So, can Invoke and then probably Pilfer afterwards. Silent Spider's nice too. And a Wedding Announcement. So Specialist gets back Farm Hands. The wedding announcement's probably more annoying. And then we can massacre for two as well. Alright, they found another announcement anyway. So massacre for two, Silent Spider can go for Sanctuary Warden. Sounds good. We'll also make an Invoke Justice less impactful if they draw it. And yeah, there we see Invoke Justice, Depopulate, Sarah Paragon, Destroy evil. Okay. Just a land. That's what we like to see. And I'm okay getting rid of one shield counter. I'm probably gonna keep the second as insurance. And then I'll keep land in hand to discard to Celestis now. So we're in decent shape. Would love to find Jengitaxius to counter any future Invoke Justices. Opponent takes four. Restoration's fine. Can Infernal Grasp the Architect eventually. Soul Transfer. Is there any creature to get back? Not quite. But uh, yeah, I can trade off my Silent Spider for two tokens if they want to, and then transfer it back. And then I think I keep the shield counter. They could still draw another Wandering Emperor to exile it, but we've seen a few destroy effects as well. So if they double block, we could Infernal Grasp, but I would rather just get more value for my Silent Spider. And I guess we could have done both here, but there's no creatures left for us to exile. And this time around, do we go for Elspeth? Or Wandering Emperor? Probably Wandering Emperor, so they won't be able to top deck another one. And then pass. And then now we're okay getting rid of another shield counter. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So a nice grindy game here against Mono White. And uh, yeah, good to see our Silent Spider in action. Getting some good value. So yeah, if you ever get to exile an opposing Invoke Despair, that's a great way to win these mid-range matchups. And then we even have Jingitaxius to counter opposing copies while doubling ours. So Invoke Despair is a big player in standard right now, and this deck optimizes not only our own copies of Invoke, but also makes sure that the opponent's copies are less effective. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.